this is you know, like I said, summer. You could drink this in the summer. You're not you're not going to get um, you're not going to get overpowered drinking it. Um, it's light or overheated. <laughs> right. And and um, I think we were talking about earlier about things that when when I find stuff in wine that I that I kind of like jump up. Barnyard's one of them, and peppers are one of them, and that like they're like the very end. You get like that a little bit of green pepper. I mean, that's what I get out of it. I mean, it's 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 it's, it's subtle. It's not really it's not really overpowering, but it's when I find those things, I, I kind of like stand up a little bit more and be like, wow. Well, like I say, this is not meant to be complex. It's meant to be enjoyed. Mm -hmm. and that's what. Uh, yeah, it's it's. We, we put we put a lot of smiles on a lot of people's faces with this. I have people email me. I've had people stop me on the street, and write letters, and I mean, occasionally that happens with some other wines, but on this one, it's just it's almost become, you know, regular. They say. I know. think it's bringing so many new people. And yeah, red wine. And, yeah, and, red and, wine. and I, I definitely would say, yeah, like people that are this may drink this three years from now. Right. This, uh, the, and, and I'm not saying this is just an entry level. Some people will drink this and enjoy well, the rest of their life. I mean, this but, is the kind of wine that I could drink in the summertime on the boat. <laughs> right. Slightly and, chilled. Like you said, this is something that, overheated. <laughs> this is something that if somebody's trying to make that 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 jump. I don't want to say graduate, but they make that change or that jump from white to red, mm -hmm. and not use a white Zinfandel as that as that little connection. Mm -hmm. This is a perfect way to do that because Absolutely. you're you're getting you're getting those flavors and aromas of reds, but it's not overpowering because mm -hmm. you know a lot of a lot of times people drink white wine because it's 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 easy it not easy but it's it's easier drinking because it's it's not. Um, it, it doesn't hit you as much, and it's because of the tannins, you know. With the reds, reds with all those tannins, you're not getting all that with with the whites. Um, and no, whites, you know, it, it, they're they're gonna. If you drink this, and you're so, if you're looking for something to go from white to red, this is something that you want to look for uh, because it gets you into the flavor profiles um, a little bit, gives you a, a kind of a, a, a preview of what you'll get. With, with some red wines, not all red wines, but some red wines. Um, and as you go to, as you go from this to say Emeritus, I mean, you, you're you're getting kind of like the hint of how red wines will taste as you go a little bit more bolder, a little heavier, more uh, full bodied with, with red wines. You know, this is, this is good. Now the barnyard is a little bit gone. A little bit of black pepper on the, mm -hmm. the aftertaste. And that's the other thing about tasting wines with other people. We all have different backgrounds, experiences, um, and like we were talking about um, the Chardonnay with pineapple, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if, if that had not have been talked about, I might not have picked up on it as quickly. I may have eventually go, yeah, there's a little bit of pineapple to it. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not saying it's a power suggestion, but sometimes you taste and smell things, and you're like, I know it, I know it. I can't quite can't. identify it. Right, and it's not something that you've never had before, but sometimes it just gives you that little bit of taste memory that hadn't quite clicked in. Right, and and that's where, you know, tasting, what we're talking about, you know, it, it's great to be able to taste with other people, because then as a group, as a collective group, you can sit there and <clears throat> and and share those experiences and somebody is maybe is a little more sensitive to one thing than another, because um, we all are on that. But what I might find is subtle, somebody may find is a little bit more, or the other way around. And it's great to be able because I would not have even thought about the black pepper at all, mm -hmm. at all, until you said something. Mm -hmm. And then now, and then that I was looking for it, but I was like, do I do I get that? I'm like, yes. Mm -hmm. It's on the tail end. Well, as I say, we're having a lot of fun with this wine, and we're going. Fastest growing wine in Texas, and we uh, hope it stays that way for quite a few right. years because we're, we're gonna, you know, much out It can be a year can. round wine for a lot of people, and Absolutely. it can be a seasonal wine for other people. Yeah, I, I'm gonna say, you know, out of, out of, out of the six wines, um, 
the, the ones that I like, I like the most are the Chenin Blanc, um, the uh, Tempranillo, and the Meritus. Um, and that's not to say I didn't like the other three. I liked the other three. But those were the ones that I liked the best. Um, and I do like this. And, I, I, and I, again, I think this is just a good overall. This is probably my fourth favorite. Let's put it that way. Um, this is um, a good overall wine that we've been talking about. It's it, it, a year-round wine, especially and especially in a climate like ours, Texas. you know, where where it's you know 350 days of summer and 15 days of not summer. You know, it's like you know, this is something where you can you can really um, drink all year round and and feel you know it, it, it's going to go you know well with with a hot summer day. Well, for instance, the ISCP conference uh, reception on Thursday night before they have a big international awards ceremony. It was at the Paramount Theater there on Congress Avenue. So the reception was at the Driscoll for a couple of hours prior to that serving Fall Creek wines. And uh, fortunately, the food and beverage director I said, what percentage do you of white to red? Thinking she go about 60, 40 on the red side and white, and she flipped it. Thank goodness she did. So here are people from all over the world that are wine-oriented people, and they're in Texas, and it's hot, and they they cannot get enough of our Sauvignon Blanc. Right. Cab, too, but uh, I mean, I'm so glad she said that, because we would have run out, but everybody was drinking white wine. So our our just like our dining habits change in the summertime in Texas because it is so hot. We want lighter, uh, not so heavy foods, I think, and so we want lighter wines, too. And it was certainly evident with these people that were in from one friend from Norway, another from uh, uh, New Zealand. Uh, right. Uh, so just literally from all over the world. Well, yeah, I've got couple of nibbles picnic well, style. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, just a very simple well, we'll, fare. We'll, uh, we'll wrap up wrap up the video portion of this. Yes. Um, like I said, um, th those those are the the, the um, Chenin Blanc, the Tempranillo, and the Meritus were my favorite. I'm going to say Ed Smooth Red is my fourth favorite. These, um, you know, and, and I'm going back, I'm going back smelling them. And, um, you know, the, the bouquets, uh, again, if you're not smelling wine, you need to smell wine. Because granted, we've had these open and, and they've been in the glass for a while, so they've even had more time. Uh, the Meritus and the Tempranillo really are just my favorites of, of, of the bouquets, but you know, and the Chenin Blanc, but you know, this, the Sauvignon Blanc, you know, I just just really enjoying it. You have a, yeah, the Chardonnay, you've got a real creamy, but but uh, unoaked or very slightly oaked right. Chardonnay, so you still get that crisp apple. So and, I mean, but the Sauvignon Blanc is crisp and sharp as a knife. So it, it kind of depends on what you're eating. And it's, and it's one of those things where, you know, again, over time when you're drinking a bottle of wine, whether you're pairing it with food or not, pay attention to what happens when you leave it in the glass for a while or when you when you open the bottle and now you've got a little more surface area so that you've, you've poured a glass and now you've got a little bit more surface area for the for the air to interact with it, it's going to develop over time. And I mean, all these wines are continually developing over this whole course of probably 45 minutes we've been talking, I'm going to guess. Um, so, um, so yes, it is, this has been wonderful and, and I, I am very, very like honored and, and pleased that you, you've, uh, uh, well, invited me and, and and taking the time to, to come down and sit with me with all this, um, we're delighted you know, to have you here. Our Saturday Saturdays are usually really busy days for for Texas wineries. Yesterday was not so busy. The, the couple I went to in the late afternoon, I was like the only person around, and I've already seen a few people come in. There's a window behind here. I've already seen a few people come in, um, and it's 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 early. It's going to get pretty pretty busy another hour or two, isn't it? it indeed, <laughs> indeed. Indeed. We, we got our uh, flower pot lunch lunches uh, going on. Make an order a little. Flower pot lunch, which right? Is a, and do you have an event going on, or do you still you no, set up those tables? We set up the tables for the people that are okay, just our, our normal uh, Saturday visitors. And they've got misters and keep fans. Keep it cool. You gotta keep it cool. It's it's you know I, I walked out to get my equipment. And I'm like, oh, misters, you know? Yes, and, and, absolutely. <laughs> you know, 
you, you definitely need that. It, you know, it's probably gonna be another hundred degree day today. It was ninety eight something, ninety nine hundred when I was over in um, over at uh, um, Spice. uh, Spicewood, and also went to McReynolds. Uh, I didn't make it. There was one more I, I was gonna try to get to, but I was that Paris sister. Um, it was Stonehouse, Stonehouse right? I, I wasn't able to make it there in time. That's a shame. You should. If if I could have gotten there at like four fifty nine and. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to impose like walk. It's like, it, okay, I am, I'm in the restaurant industry. I don't like walking into a restaurant at you know 15 minutes, 30 minutes before they close. Not that I won't, but I don't like doing it. You know, but if I'm hungry, I'm gonna walk in. Oh, so I didn't want to do that to them, like you know, right before their their official closing time, oh, walk lovely. in. You know what I mean? And, yes. and and like impose myself. Well, I'm gonna be here for another 30 minutes, and you know, but uh, I. I, I it was like the timing was not quite right. I wasn't going to be able to get there in time to really to feel comfortable enjoying it and, and spending a lot of time there. You know, it would have been like, oh, I mean, taste some wines, okay, and get out. So um, I, that's just because my day started kind of late yesterday. But, um, you know, I've got a couple places I'm going to hit um, over in the area here. Um, well, the Hill Country, of course, right. is, you know, we're pretty bullish on that. And I've got my little, I got my little Texas wine bible. Yes. So of course, you have to have this. Absolutely. Um, so the the other places we're going to be hitting are Lost Creek and El, yes, Lost Creek and Alamosa. Good. Um, Good. Which um, I've I've had some contact with Alamosa before. I've had some of their wines before. Right. Good. Um, so uh, Karen and Jay you know, do a lovely job. Right? If you if you are if you live here or you're coming here, I know that some of the information is a lot dated because like the right. owners of Spicewood are no longer the owners of Spicewood in this in this. Um, but um, this is definitely something you need to have for for Texas. You know, just like anywhere else, if you're going to go to any other part of the country, make sure you get a book about those wineries. At least you get an idea of where you're going to be going. There's to. a wonderful new book coming out. In fact, I should put you on the, the uh, invitation list. If okay. You do that. Um, July seventh is the unveiling of uh, Spectacular Wineries of Texas, okay. which is a fabulous coffee table book. Uh, I think they feature 50 wineries in Texas, and um, they have, their first first uh, winery book was Napa, second one was Sonoma, and I believe Texas is their third one, so we're delighted that uh, Texas and, and we particularly are pretty bullish on the hill country, right. and in fact, Ed, of course, he's in his former life as an attorney, he still is an attorney. He keeps his license <laughs> no, current, but he, has, he has not practiced law in about 20 years or 30 years. Sounds uh, like my music. <laughs> and, uh, except to write laws for the Texas wine industry, and right. he, uh, he, of course, got the, uh, the federal designation Texas Hill Country Appalachian um, nice. uh, for us um, back in 1990. So, and uh, Texas uh, Hill Country, of course, is the second most widely visited uh, wine region behind Napa. I don't know Which I don't know if a lot of people know no, that. I mean, that's pretty incredible. The locals probably know it a little more than, than the rest than, than the rest of the country, but that's something to think about how Texas is, is growing uh, in, in the wine tourism industry. It's, it's People are coming here, not just locals, but from all over the place to, to check it out because they're hearing about it. And they're hearing about how it's the... I, I would say, well, yeah, it's like kind of the next Napa Valley. Valley. Because, I mean, and I was talking with um, um, Jeff yesterday at Spicewood and, well, and, and, and everybody else over there, but talking about how we're, we're quote, 30 years, 30 years ago, this is what Napa Valley was like. Um, yeah, it's an overgeneralization, but the idea is that the, 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 the winemakers here are, are kind of at that, that point where Napa was in the 70s and 80s that they're they're really starting to come in and, and understand what we need as, as Texas wineries to come in and what we need to be growing, how we need to be doing it, and to be ma starting to make some some really world class wines um, that are going to be stand up to the well, French was, wines. Yes, and, and, and it was in the seventies the famous Stevens right, right. famous tasting that made uh, elevated Napa. Right, and I think uh, I think consequently this Friday night tasting with all these international people in Austin tasting Texas wines, I think that may have been a real pivotal point. And I think this coffee table book, uh, I haven't seen it, so it's going to be exciting for the unveiling on uh, July 7th, but I nice. think that's, that's another great uh, promotion for the Texas wine industry. Exactly. And uh, we, uh, we've worked hard and arduously for the last 36 years or more 
to build this industry. I guess that's why we're called the first family of Texas wine. <laughs> we, we put in, we put in a, a number of decades uh, making it such, and that's why we started the Texas Hill Country Wine and Food Festival, which just finished its 27th year and is being folded into the new Austin Food and Wine Festival, which is with Food and Wine Magazine okay. as a partnership with uh, Charlie Jones. Uh, so that's next year, next spring, you can look forward to a really exciting new uh, remade Texas Hill Country Wine and Food Festival. But awesome. we, we created that festival back in 1986 to promote the Hill Country as a wine growing region so that he'd have the evidence he needed uh, because that, that was part of the criteria with the federal government. You had to prove that it was a known uh, viticultural region. A known uh, viticultural no. region. Well, in the. Uh, it was unknown. In the, in the <laughs> 80s, was back in the yeah. It was, right. it was not known, but we created it with the Southwest Cuisine was making such a big statement, and we uh, became good friends with uh, the uh, Robert Del Grande, Stephen Piles, and uh, Dean Farring, who were uh, the star Southwest Cuisines and had gained quite a national reputation. So I said, help us create a festival in Texas. Let's turn the spotlight on Texas right. and the Hill Country. And so thankfully, that Hill Country Appalachian was established, and now it's uh, a real uh, attraction for us. Awesome. All right, we're going to wrap this up. Um, I'm sure we're going to have some more conversations off camera. Um, but uh, any of these wines, I would highly recommend to get. Um, I would say my absolute favorite is the Tempranillo. Um, but uh, like I said, you know, I, I, any of these wines, if you, if you, well, first of all, if you're in Texas, you should be able to find most of them. Of course, the Tempranillo well, kind of hard to find yeah. in, at, at the store level. Um, because you have to go to a restaurant, but you said like the 2010, that's going to be something that you'll be able to, yeah, you'll yes, be able more to get readily available. More yeah. readily available. So uh, make sure you seek that out. Um, if you're not in Texas, um, they can contact you. You can, you can. We ship wine out every week around the, around the world. <laughs> so in 20 states, we can legally ship. To. So awesome. So I mean, it, somewhere in, in the video, the the the, ad, the the website address is it was on was on the bottom. But if you go to the website. What you need to go to is you can click all the links. I'm sorry, click the ad. Oh, I'm not supposed to say click the ads because I'm not supposed to say that. Yeah. But anyway, that's where all the, the money stuff is. <laughs> so I can raise my blip.tv revenue to $18 for the all time. Like I said, I don't make a lot of money off of this. Um, anyway, um, go to the website, click the link uh, to get you to here, and you can order any of these wines uh, or what was it, five out of the six wines. The 2010 Tempranillo you can order. Or not, not yeah, yet, we right? ordered oh, when the, yeah, when the two yeah, twenty ten yeah. comes out. Yeah, when that comes out, you'll be able to order that. Um, but definitely order any of these. And like I try to tell people all the time, listen to how how people are describing the wine because that's that's the best way to determine whether you're going to like it. Don't just sit there and look at a score. I may score something ninety two or eighty five or or seventy five, but you may have a different opinion of it. You know, listen to what is being said. Um, if, if, you're, if, if your palate matches mine, then you know you're going to like the same stuff I do. If your palate matches Robert Parker, then you, then you know it's going gonna, it's gonna to do that. If, if your palate matches that other video guy, we won't mention his name, uh, Gary, um, if, if your palate matches him, cool. But listen to what is being said. Don't just look at a score um, because that, that way you know, what you're, you know if you're going to like the wine or not. That's going to wrap it up for today. Um, uh, Thank you for uh, stopping by again, and we'll see everybody again next time.